we need to talk about underfloor heating because I see that most underfloor heating on YouTube or most underfloor heating sold to people out there uh, belongs to the last century. What you see on manifolds is fixed blending valves. Those really shouldn't be used anymore. What you also see is microbore pipe work 10, 12 mil. I wouldn't advise using it either. In this video, we're gonna show you how modern underfloor heating should be installed and what to look for. What we have here is a system boiler with an unvented cylinder that is installed or was installed in a typical S-plan configuration. So a damp boiler doesn't know what it's doing, just being told by the uh, zone valves to fire and it fires. That's it. That's called water heating at the same time. There are radiators upstairs, underfloor heating downstairs. The boiler always fires at the same temperature, runs inefficiently. Uh, 37 kilowatt boiler as well, so four times bigger than this property really needs. This property could do with a 10 kilowatt boiler. So we are in the middle of improving this setup, improving underfloor heating, improving hot water performance as well. Uh, we've done the plumbing bit now, so, so if you look here, I've put what's called a Kimbo header. This is just a bit of big pipe and it allows separation from the boiler pump so it can circulate around this bit of pipe and that pump for radiators and another pump that we're gonna put on the underfloor heating manifold. Now, we also started wiring this setup. So we've got our uh, wiring center from Valent and we're gonna put Valent controls. So what this system will allow us to do once it's all wired is boiler will fire for hot water ignoring heating completely because we've got this diverter valve here. So it either does heating or hot water, not both at the same time. That will allow us to set the kilowatt output of the boiler to the coil so it's not too small not too big doesn't cycle because we don't need 37 kilowatts to charge the cylinder because the boiler would cycle that coil can't take that much power the house can't take that much power so there's absolutely no point having so much power in a boiler to start with but it is what it is so we have to work with what we have having those modern controls will allow us to lower that output of the boiler for hot water then when the boiler reverts to heating, it's gonna run weather compensated curve. So we've got a sensor outside. It's gonna sense the external temperature and modulate its output accordingly. And we're gonna have two different flow temperatures. One for radiators that's gonna run at maximum 55 degrees and one for underfloor heating that's gonna run at maximum 35 degrees because the floors are tiled and screeded. Uh, now, if the boiler fires for radiators, and fires at 55 degrees, we have to blend the temperature down. And I'm gonna show you how it happens there in a second. If the boiler fires only for underflow heating, it's gonna fire at 35 degrees, maximum flow temperature, no blending required. This is what you normally see on the manifolds and 99% of underflow heating gets installed with those. Please stop doing that, if you can. If you have a boiler that can do electronic mixers, you really shouldn't be installing those anymore. This is a fixed temperature manifold. This requires very high temperature from the boiler to come to here, let's say 60, 70 degrees, and it's blended down at the manifold. There's absolutely no need to do that anymore because it's inefficient and actually not that comfortable for the, for the customer if you run it on on-off controls with tons of actuators as we see on this manifold. So this is an upgraded setup. So that pump, it's the same pump as you have uh, on here. We just removed the blending valve. And this is our electronic mixing valve. And this valve is controlled by a motor. In this case, we're using SB valve, but there are different manufacturers doing that as well. This is controlled by uh, the boiler, by the wiring center on the boiler and the by weather compensated uh, sensor outside. And if the, this system is running on weather compensation, there's no longer any need to send temperature higher than the manifold needs from the boiler. So let's say it's minus two, we need 35 degrees flow temperature, 35 degrees will come through that pipe, that valve will be fully open, and that pump will push the water to underfloor heating. If the radiators kick in on, on higher temperature, this valve will automatically adjust to blend it down with the return coming back from the manifold. The main difference between uh, this setup 
is the fact that this is fixed, always the same temperature. This will change the amount of return water being mixed in the system depending on what boiler does, what flow temperature it fires and will also uh, react to the changes to the temperature outside. This is a thermostat, pipe stat, low limit stat that we put as a safety. If temperature overshoots on that pipe to the set on the thermostat, it will turn the pump off. Because if the customer plays with the controls and set them to 70 degrees, if that stat wasn't there, there would be nothing stopping 70 degree water going to under for heating and that could be catastrophic to the floor finishes. So we need that kind of protection here. There'll also be a sensor on flow to radiators and another sensor going on pipe work here that links back to the boiler so the boiler always knows what flow temperature it sends to under for heating, what flow temperature it sends to radiators and another sensor inside the cylinder that tells the boiler what temperature there is inside the cylinder of your domestic hot water. So it's a much more sophisticated setup. And that setup allows not only greater efficiency, much greater control, but also much better comfort. So it's a win-win-win situation. And uh, the only drawback of those setups is they are more complex, uh, more expensive to install, and also not many people know how to install it. So I hope my videos will change that and more guys will go out there and install them. And also more customers will demand those kind of setups because they simply are better. And that's your typical wiring center for underfloor heating. Normally you've got actuators wired, wired to it, one per loop. Usually way too many controls, way too many thermostats. And you don't need it. You, you don't need wiring centers, you don't need uh, loops, controls. All those controls are there only because it's high temperature setup. It gets a lot of energy quickly, overheats and shuts off zones so it doesn't get too hot. If it's if the system is designed correctly, especially under for heating, it should run continuously at very low temperatures, pretty much self-regulating. Uh, the truth is though, I have, I'm yet to see a well-designed system. From all the under for heating companies I have seen, there's only one that knows how to design a system correctly. If you order your underfloor heating and you get a design, uh, they do that without heat loss. And doing a design without heat loss is not a design. It's just trying to sell you more kit that you don't need and trying to give you a design without a heat loss because they probably worry if they tell you I want a heat loss to design your system correctly, you'll go somewhere else. If you do underfloor heating, you do need heat loss. Without heat loss, it stops. You can't design it correctly. I also need to talk about pipe sizes. So, I've seen people still installing small bore pipes for under for heating, such as 10 or 12 mil or 11.5, whatever they are. Don't do it. You're gonna get yourself into trouble. 16 and 17 mil pipe work is the absolute minimum you should be installing. Reason being, small pipe work will, will give you a lower output, will require higher flow temperature, and will have tremendously higher pressure loss. So you always need a pump on the manifold. If you move to a heat pump and you want to run a heat pump efficiently, you remove pumps on manifolds. You rely on a circulator inside the unit to do that. That's the, by far the most efficient way to run a heating system. However, if your underfloor heating is of a small bore type, you may need additional pumps, you may need buffers, uh, you may need higher flow temperatures. This may not make such a massive difference in the boiler, but Running a system at 35 degrees and 55 degrees makes a tremendous difference on a heat pump. So if you're having an underfloor heating designed or installed, do all you can not to install anything smaller than 16 millimeters diameter pipe work. Anything smaller, it shouldn't really be installed these days unless you've got a passive house or super well insulated new build, then you may be okay with smaller bore pipe works. But for majority of situations, just avoid it. 16 or 17 mil only. System is now finished and running, and we have brought this boiler back into the 21st uh, century. And it's running beautifully, weather compensated, at 38 degrees right now. Yeah, it's running low, it's running weather compensated. Everything is controlled now by this VR71 Valent wiring center. So if you have a Valent boiler and a cylinder, this is what you should be using. And under for heating is running as well. Pump running. 
uh, SB blending valve fully open because the boiler is running at 30 uh, few degrees so that's all that under heating needs right now and in case it overheats we've got a pipe stud that will shut the pump down in case the flow temperature the mix temperature behind the SB mixer goes over the set temperature here which is now set to 45 degrees we never want water hotter than 45 degrees entering under for heating anyway so this is the lot you are left once you've finished uh, converting traditional should we say or inefficient or high temperature systems especially under for heating systems into modern systems so zone valves no one needs those in 21st century we don't use them this is all just pumped and mixed valves are removed just diverters for hot water fixed blending valves no need for those either inefficient high temperature we don't like them uh, actuators you don't really need them if you know how to set up manifolds how to balance the flows uh, again unnecessary heat miser this is you know this is stuff that i don't really like they're not user friendly and i see you know them as many as loops on manifolds so sometimes you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops on the manifold, seven of those seven actuators. Tons of money, tons of wiring that no one needs. Because low temperature heating will balance itself out, it's self-regulating. No need for over control. Wiring VR71s or VR70s valent controls, it's much more difficult than just doing your standard S plans. That's why people don't want to do it. It takes time, it takes effort and it takes a lot of trial and error to make it work. Also, when you quote for jobs, oh, you are 200 quid more expensive on this one. You might be a few hundred quid more expensive on an SB valve as well. However, I think it all balances out because you don't need actuators, you don't need tons of heat miser controls, so you're getting cheaper there. So the cost is probably comparable. It's more about the effort it takes to learn new things. People don't want to learn new things. They want to be stuck in the old ways that really belong to the last century. So if you install Valent boilers, please don't do your customer a disservice. Don't install anything else than Valent controls. You'll have much more heavier customers and you'll become a better engineer yourself.